A lesbian coven of witches, demonic possessions, spells and incantations, immaculate conceptions, and flaming stone are just some of the many, many interesting inclusions by Leslie Headland for Acolyte Episode 3. Is this... is this even Star Wars anymore? Well, it is now. Let's talk about it on That Park Place Podcast Online, or as we like to call it, T3, Theo. Good evening, and we are happy to be back with you after having suffered through the Acolyte. Uh, Lauren Connor is joining us, of course, and Lauren, uh, you are not watching the Acolyte. You've decided that you're not going to support the personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein, but uh, I have sat through this, Lauren. I have seen episode three. I have seen it, listened to it, heard it with my own eyes, and uh, folks, I'm here to tell you the holiday special has been dethroned by 10 times over. This uh, is making it be over, I think, for Star Wars, for Kathleen Kennedy. The fan base will not stand for this. But uh, Jonas, you just came out of watching it. Did you complete the entire episode? Yes, I did. I watched the entire thing right up to directed by Kogonada. Jonas, here's a couple of uh, interesting things. And full spoilers tonight, folks. Nothing is going to stand unspoiled. But when my wife walked by and saw the witches doing... Rhythmic, romantic motions with heavy breathing in a giant crowd of religious movement. My wife looked and said, I am so sorry you have to watch this trash. And she walked out of the room. <laughs> it's, so, it's so strange. It really, it really is strange. So we're on planet Brenduck, which to me just sounds like Brenda with a K on the end of it. Brenda, so. Okay, Brenda. Yeah, we're on planet Brenda. And I have new, by the way, we have great new names for all these characters. Oh, no. Introduced. Oh, no. <laughs> Catch me up to speed, please. My favorite is Anorex Baca, who is Chewbacca, but very skinny. Anorex Baca was in this one. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's just like Alan Ng said. It's basically a dude with a with a Wookiee mask on. It's um, yes. Uh, we, we do meet young Torben, who I, I'm, I'm really struggling to think why anyone would feel guilty enough to self-delete uh, based off of Torben's part in this, because there's pretty much nothing that happens there that is anything to do with Torben. Has now, Torben feels to guilty with... for the rat tail that he's sporting. It's it's awful. It's like, you know, it's, he's trying to steal it from your main man, Mr. Kenobi. Marvin, the movie Monster is here. Marvin, how are you? Oh, may the thread be with you, gentlemen. Oh, my. Oh, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the thread. And uh, uh, guys, here, here's a takeaway. Here's a hot take as we get started on this. I, I think after this, you have to conclude the Jedi are indeed the bad guys. They're evil. I, I think there's uh, no way about it. You might could come away saying the witches are bad, too. I don't think so. But you definitely oh, no, no, cannot they're, they're walk away from this They're definitely the thing. oppressed here. Definitely. Yes, you, the, the Jedi are evil. Let's Great. get this out of the way. This is some janky TV show level lighting that they've got on this $200 million uh, uh, monstrosity here. There are episodes of Legend of the Seeker that were shot better than than parts of this show. I, it's wildly inconsistent in the cinematography. Let's, let's go over some confirmation so we can get this out of the way. Uh, first of all... The twins are indeed born from lesbian witches. They call the woman of color mommy, but the, uh, I'm going to call her gr uh, girl mall. Is that okay? Is girl mall okay? Is well, yeah, she is a Dathomirian. So she's yeah, already okay, a so, back to the witches of Dathomir. No, she's a, she's a Zabrak. She, yeah, she looked like an Iridonian Zabrak. Whatever okay. you want to call taking her, care of that, guys. <laughs> You're welcome, Lon. So girl mall is the one who apparently carried as in when she was the one who was pregnant with the uh, good twin and bad twin. But again, they call the woman of color, okay? We'll call her Mommy Witch. They call Mommy Witch Mom, for some reason that makes no sense. And Mommy Witch yes, is you, in charge, of course. Mother NSA. Okay, Mother NSA, I like that. Mm. So we've got that. That's confirmed, folks. The other thing here, this is, all right, is everybody ready to get mad out there in the audience? Here's where we can all get mad together. But there's a positive side to this. I promise there is. It, this is so bad that there's no way this continues. Okay, so here's here's what's uh, out there that's going to end the Kathleen Kennedy version of Star Wars. In this show, those who call it the Force and those who wield it as the Force are wrong. And they are oppressors and they are using it in a way that it is not intended. Um, this thing that exists that binds all living organisms together is actually a thread and it is manipulated and maneuvered in a completely different way. And if you are using it as the force, you're like tugging on the quilt, the fabric of it. 
but you are supposed to use it as a thread. It is what binds everyone together. And actually the thread works in a, in a new way. And by the way, Lorne, I'll get your take on this. The thread, not the force, may the thread be with you. If you have one, one thread user, then you have a certain degree of power. If you have two thread users, you double your power or perhaps even more. And if you have many thread users altogether, that power is greatly increased. And apparently if you writhe passionately, um, then you get super, like, put stuff in your face powers. I don't know. But anyway. Um, Except they all die at the end. So. Yes. And with no explanation. So, Lauren, yeah. here's my question for you. This is the first time I've ever heard of the thread. This is the first time I've ever heard of many users making the thread more powerful. But I wonder if this is feeding into what we heard before, that in the Mandalorian movie, they're going to have Grogu and Luke combine powers, and somehow they can use the Force more powerfully together. Lorne, start us off. Have, have you ever heard of the thread before? Is this a brand new territory? What the heck did we just watch, even though you didn't watch it? Well, no. As far as I know, this has never been referenced this way before. The witches have been, and the fact that they use magic what they call Night Sister Magic, which is their manifestation of the Force. That's not new. But this new backstory about them viewing it as a weave outside of what we saw in Ahsoka is new. But the thing is, Lynn, that they're not the Night Sisters of Dathomir. They're not, um, they're not, they don't call themselves Night Sisters. They don't use the same Night Sister Magic. It's something completely new, completely. They're not using like the green smoke, the green thought cloud, or whatever you want to say. And they just call themselves witches. Well, like, I don't, I, I don't doubt that, but I suspect that the, what they're going to say is that each of these covens is slightly different because they're in different places, because the Night Sisters were essentially rooted on Dathomir. If you go back to the mm. original courtship of Princess Leia, in fact, they were marooned there and couldn't get off. But this new conception of the of these witches, what I believe they're going to do is go back to the beginning and claim that they were the first users of the Force, the ones that were truly practicing it in the correct way, and that they were oppressed and exiled and in other ways... Appropriated. Well, yeah, so, appropriated. so much for that. They're, they're, they're dead now, so that, that'll well, be they're, uh, quite the... The matriarchy, oh, no, was, no, the matriarchy was killed. <laughs> John, how did the matriarchy die in this? Because I still don't understand how the matriarchy died. They don't explain it. Okay, so the, 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 the entire matriarchy was offed off screen. Is that, that fair? Yes, they're it's, just dead. It's so weird. Like, like within 30 seconds of actual real time in the show. There's an explosion in the same room that doesn't kill someone that's there, but then the explosion also kills like a pile of people. There's a they pile were all together apparently the- writhing some more. Except for uh, Mother NSA, and she's off on her own. And they confirm this, by the way. And, and the daughter sees it. But then they go we to don't. another scene. No, they, well, well, she looks. We don't no, see she, her body. She like, literally says, her. "No, it's mom or whatever." No, and, they and, show her. Yeah, they, they do. They show. But, by the way, they Joe pass Curtis a bunch did. of them dead, and then they go into the courtyard, and she's there, and she says, "Mom," and then, well, yeah, she says, "Mama," oh, but we only away. see like her from the back. We we only see like there's something on the ground. We don't. But, they don't actually show you her dead. And then when she wakes up in the next scene, she's like, what happened? So it's Ugh. it's literally, they you have seen this happen on screen, and then they do another scene. It's super clumsy writing, in my opinion, where he has to explain what happened all over again. I and, get and it tell, that there tell them, someone tell them. who doesn't understand what happens and in trauma they forget, but this is supposed to be a television show. You shouldn't have two scenes back-to-back where the same thing has to be explained twice. So, so Jonas, That's explain it. what he says happened off screen to the matriarchy, the oppressed ma- matriarchy that the Jedi did wrongly. Uh, what the Jedi did wrong? I, I, I don't think that that did he say that the Jedi? I see. I missed no. this. The Jedi clearly okay, okay. butchered them. We get that from the last episode where the guy like commits uh... self deletion. Yeah, but it's That's not what's the Jedi. Here. Here, here's the funny thing though: the Jedi didn't do anything. It's the uh, it's the other sister that decided no. that she's gonna blow the whole place up she literally just says like just out of the blue uh i, I am going to hurt you to the i, I don't know how far, to far kill we you. she just says i, I will kill you right right, right. so that's you. what soul is telling osha he's lying to her because they actually killed all of these witches that's what happened i Watch totally it. missed that and i i thought i was paying attention pretty good uh, they're saying that the jedi killed all of the witches no it's heavily I mean, earlier i think you can connect you connect you can connect the threads uh, <laughs> <laughs> i think it is heavily implied that the jedi are the ones who blew up the stuff on top which wiped out the matriarchy 
except for Mommy uh, Witch, who was off to the side. But uh, as we figure all this out, Lauren, your face is exactly right. That episode again. Michelle, give us is your it... initial thoughts, having just watched uh, whatever this was. I have a lot of questions. Uh, <laughs> I have more questions than answers, mm. I feel like. Uh, well, when a space witch loves a space witch. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot that could be said here. Uh, if I'm allowed to fully go into that, I, I really wonder... Oh, we're, we're spoiling everything. There's no stopping this. Uh, for starters, I'm with Jonas of like, I don't see how there's any way the Jedi killed these witches. Uh, secondly, this I will say the one thing this episode did, it made me appreciate little Osha more because as a little girl, she was like, I want out of this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I want out of the writhing witch uh, cult, yes. But here's a question now, everybody on here, and, and Michelle, let's start with you. Is there any part of this show that says to you that this was not written by the former personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein, or does this add up perfectly to someone such as Leslie Headland being the writer? No, 100% she wrote it. Because like I even wrote down, like the witches are all allegory. Like this is all allegory for how how Leslie Headland feels the patriarchy oppresses women. Uh, it's even going back to kind of the Salem witch trials, I think, is what she's kind of was in her mind, like like that type thing of, uh, oh, they, they're keeping women down. And, and I mean, obviously, weird things did happen at, back at that time, but it's all allegory for Leslie Headland and her worldview. I, that, that was just abundantly clear watching this. All right. So here's here's how the episode goes, folks. And we are full blown spoilers. So good twin and bad twin are having a, a grand old time playing in the hills of Idaho. When all of a sudden a Jedi shows up, an evil man shows up, and he he brings a sausage party of force wielders with him. But uh, luckily, the good twin and bad twin they're being protected by Lesbian Witch Mountain, where that, uh, a pale the female bad twin wants to kill the uh, butterfly. Oh yeah, yeah, bad twin wants to kill a butterfly, which is uh, what we in the business folks call foreshadowing. Very subtle, very subtle. But they're being protected in Lesbian Witch Mountain. Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam, Hoover Dam, Le Lesbian Witch Mountain, and the pale-skinned female Darth Maul is apparently the one who carried them in her womb, but somehow the Mama Witch, the head Mama Witch, who is of color, she is the one who impregnated her somehow. And it's all through magic. We're not sure exactly how. And everything is going pretty well. They have an ascension ceremony where they writhe. They writhe in some sort of ritualistic, hedonistic kind of manner for an ascension ceremony where bad twin is given magical powers, but good twin is not for plot reasons. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. At, at yeah. this point, there is literal singing in the soundtrack, power of one, power of two, power of many. Yes. There's like a chorus in the background. I thought that it's was straight up, strange. It's straight occult. Uh -huh. Yeah. And they marked her with a brand on her head. Yes, it, this is straight occult stuff. So if only, then, they, if only they had listened to Charmed, the power of three could have actually set them free. <laughs> and, and I just want to go back to the first episode. That's when Trinity actually recognized her with the tattoo. Yes. Yes. So then Trinity, the off brand Qui Gon, and Anorex Baca show up, and uh, guilt ridden white guy. They all show up and they ruin everything because they interrupt the religious ceremony. And good twin is not allowed to have magic. And as a result, she doesn't get powers. And then the Jedi don't take the kids from their parents, but the Jedi put the kids in a position where they have to be tested so they can take them away from their parents. So the Jedi are clearly evil here, um, but for some unknown and really obscure reason, good twin doesn't want to be in the only place she's ever been in her life. She's never experienced anything else. She's never been exposed to anything else. And she's been taught that the Jedi are evil, but she wants to be a Jedi, gosh darn it. Which makes absolutely no sense. I don't no even think she knows who no the Jedi are at all. Like, so to what, me, it so was like... Why does she want to... Because, because what was, like, she perplexing. wants adventure in the great white somewhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, 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 I want to pull at this thread. <laughs> we're, we're, we're kind of breezing by some important things that I want right, to please, Jokes, here. please. These ch child actors are horrible. And I, <laughs> I, I, I don't... We said I don't, not to go after the kids. It was rule I, number one, Jonas. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, I mean, the acting is so flat from these two girls. And I get it. This is their... This is... I don't know. Maybe they did some community theater before this. I get it. It's very hard to take kids to auditions in Hollywood and whatever. But wow, the acting was flat on those kids. It's like there's no emotion whatsoever 
from these actresses that are supposed and I'm assuming they're actresses. I mean, those those horrible haircuts and wigs hide a lot. It's just you know, so it's, uninspired it's, and not connecting. I'm, I'm trying to find something outside of Star Wars that I could compare this to as far as horrible performances from a child. Honestly, Jonas, it made me long for the days of, are you an angel? From episode one. <laughs> no, and, it, and, it, 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 vindication for Jake Lloyd, by the way, because he's no longer the worst kid in Star Wars. And, and, and he, he is head and shoulders above these two girls uh, on this. And if they hadn't put so much on these two young actresses for the entire episode, that's what yeah. you put on. That's what you put on the director. When the child performance is not as good, you give them less things to say in Hold the episode. Someone named Koganata was the director. Right. right. And he's directed, you know, uh, things that aren't that bad. M maybe there's a language barrier thing. I don't think there is. But you do not put that much on a child actor when 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 they aren't that good. Also, uh, by the way, apparently they don't have ice cream in Star Wars, but they do have spice cream. Space, space no, it's cream. space cream. It's it's worse space than spice cream. cream. That Wait, is the stupidest. Cream? It no, they changed stupidest. it to be spice cream. They changed no, it. It's... No, they changed it midway through. It's spice cream in the beginning, and then at the end, it's space cream. The stupidest thing I have ever heard in any sci-fi show, and I'm talking about watching Mystery Science Theater 3000. I have never heard anything so stupid as space cream. Can, can I ask a clarifying point here in the middle? Sure. Sure. So, not having seen this, the Jedi show up. This is obviously after the ritual occurred. That no, it's created... in the middle of it. It's in the middle right, of it. Right. The Jedi are there, and they don't, they they don't come back until the evening when the ritual is going on. So I was going to say, like, going back on what Jonas was saying about too much being put on the kids, which I agree. And I think some of that is probably the director's fault, because this is two straight episodes back to back where line reading is just so flat. So I, I think some of that is probably the direction. I, and then, you know, can be talent as well. But do you guys not feel that this is the type, this episode, especially considered how many episodes are there? Six or eight? Eight. Eight. There's eight. Okay, you've got eight episodes. You are two episodes in. You, you have six left. This entire episode felt like something that any capable good writer would have just showed you like very short flashbacks throughout the entire eight episodes that like you got the gist of what you needed happen, but you didn't have a full episode wasted in this world. Do you get what I'm saying? Like we didn't need yeah, a full yeah. 35 minutes of this world to let us see the information because there's not that much interesting going on here despite the no. fact that they are breaking so much about the canon here on this planet there's really not that much going on here there's not a some special way that they function other than the fact that there's a coven they have very different ideas about the force and they would would claim that their ideas about the force are reactionary to uh, the, the, the line is some call it a force and claim to use it as opposed and to the force is the thing that binds the galaxy together and all that. They've had an immaculate conception of twins as well, um, oh, which gives credence is, to what they're saying. Can I point out something about that is that they made it a point to use the exact verbiage that Shmi Skywalker used when talking yes. about Anakin, yes. where she said, there is no father. Yeah, mm -hmm. they yes. have no father. And then she says, uh, you bore them. And the other one says, and I created them. Yeah, and, and it, it just, okay, that line really ticked me off because they just can't let, so I don't want to use the word sacred for Star Wars, but something in, in the Star Wars canon that, you know, it is what it is. They just can't let Anakin be the chosen one, the one nope, that there nope, was nope, prophecy nope. on, that there was- They hate Anakin, killed. they hate- they, they can't let that one character that 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 is literally the main story that George wanted to tell the rise, the fall and the redemption of Anakin Skywalker. I mean, that is there the were two before. Saga. There yeah, two before Anakin. Not there just were one. two before. So he's not Women special. Yeah. Yeah. Accidental the pro -life messaging in there, too, by the way. A thread tied you together before you were born. That's uh, that's I don't think that's a message that anyone like Leslie Hedlund would intentionally uh, put in there. Well, Lauren's got a question. Lauren, hop in here with your, your question you had. I'm having trouble with the timeline because I think what you were saying is that this ritual is what created these twins, right? No, no, no. The ritual no. is what is, is called the Ascension. It's what is supposed to make them full-fledged members of the coven, I think. Because there right. are no It's like children a bar mitzvah. It's like a baptism kind of thing. She, yeah, shoots and they, a, she shoots like purple magic onto their forehead and then they get a brand. And then okay. who knows what it actually does, though. They don't tell us. All right. I, I was trying to understand how we went from conception to 
Apparently I'm assuming that when, the, whenever that happened, I'm hoping it happened privately, but I don't know how this coven <laughs> operates. The conception so, was just dialogue. We yeah, never saw yes. any of that. So <laughs> I've got two things to ask the entire panel. Step one, um, and I'll tell both questions, then we'll take it one at a time. My first question is going to be about the witches ritual where they're having, they're writhing folks get the idea, but they're doing that uh, hand gestures. as part of this religious thing they're doing for the little girls. Okay. Does that have any place in, in a Star Wars show? That's the first question I've got for the panel. And then the second question I'm going to come back to is, does this forever alter the force and does it actually change the canon of the original movies when it seems like this show is saying that if you use the force and call it the force, you're an oppressor. So we'll start with question one about what were your thoughts on the writhing ceremony? John, I'm going to hand it to you first of all. What did you make of witchcraft writhing ritual with little girls? Yeah, so I thought it was obviously them trying to normalize like demonic satanic rituals. I think what uh, Michelle said earlier, it's all allegory. And I think that's definitely what they were trying to do with that. Um, uh, as far as your second question, I was actually hoping the Jedi would show up and then butcher them there. Um, <laughs> put, an, put an end to the the use of the dark side there uh and but whatever the, kind of clearly like, the witches are presented were, as being good uh, well, sure but i can still root for the jedi killing these evil people oh, yeah, i'm like, with you i'm just saying that from the no perspective of the children. writer from the perspective yeah, yeah, of the I mean, writer the clearly. witches are good yeah Right. Well, Alan Moore also thought that Rorschach was the people didn't like him. And he's like the most popular character out of his uh, Watchmen book. Right. He's the uh, one who actually has a moral code. So these people can think whatever they want. That's not going to like change what is right and wrong. They can try and present things as uh, that way. But it doesn't it's, it doesn't affect how all, like the audience views it. We even saw that with uh, Eric Kripke recently. He's obviously with uh, talking about the boys in Homelander. Uh, he's like kind of upset that some people view Homelander as like the hero of the show. <laughs> So, so, so yeah, that's to... kind of what I was hoping for. Obviously, I knew that wasn't going to happen. Um, they did no. show up in the middle of it and put a stop to it. So, but your uh, position, was... John, is that they that the Jedi did later butcher the witches, right? Uh, that is, uh, I think, is what I, I suspect happened. Yeah. I, I, John was I, okay, so, well, yeah, if the Jedi did it, they didn't do it with lightsabers. Everybody's got their hands. Uh, I'll, I'll point that out. And and they were all in. For some reason, the main witch is off on her own. I don't know. It's just so strange. It's not a fire death. It's not a lightsaber death. And the, the placement is a it's little It's a plot death. Strange. Did yeah. the deaths death. occur? Did the deaths occur when they were in the middle of the ritual? No. no, no um, off screen a day after. So the ritual happens. The Jedi show up and they're, you know, in, in the middle of everything. I don't know why they couldn't have shown up during the daytime and interrupt everything. And they're hiding the kids in the middle of this whole thing because there's a crowd of them. They can do that. And they literally call out and say, uh, come out here and, and join us. And, and uh, whichever good twin with the Rick James wig comes out and, and, and like Saul shows her his lightsaber. It's actually a, it's it's a well acted little moment at least on the Lee Jung Jae side. And then they all just kind of disperse. There's this argument about whether or not the kids need to go. Um, and, oh, oh, she's old enough to decide for herself. That was a that was a line from the witch mom, which I thought was, you know. And these and girls are presented as what, eight, Yeah, then nine? she instantly contradicted herself, though, by saying, mm -hmm. like, we'll yep. have a discussion about this, mm -hmm. and, but we will, like, uh, what is it? We will uh, acknowledge your 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 but opinion. Which is, we'll take your opinion into yeah, consideration. Under, 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 which is our overall good, good because they'll give the kids a choice. Hopefully, they don't do that on brushing teeth, but they'll give the kids a choice. Whereas the Jedi are there to test you and take you away with a blood sample, right? That's the that's the yes. message. Well, and she further contradicted herself because at one point she said. How like something like kids don't know one moment you want to be a Jedi. I was thinking, yes, can we can we get that message out, Disney? A uh, cat <laughs> you know need to be making certain decisions, but okay. Yeah. All right. So Michelle, it's it's your turn now. Tell us, do you think that this retcons the original movies now and, and recanonizes them? I mean, yeah, I would say they're they're trying to, but like for me, no, because this is like bad. I don't, you know, as I, I don't want to say fan fiction, because I don't really know that these people are fans. It's like badly written fiction from someone who claims to be a fan. Uh, but yeah, so this I'm is saying, canon. This is canon now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but <laughs> in, in our hearts, is it canon? In our hearts, no. I I don't think that matters. <laughs> I mean. They're gonna if if they get any semblance of ratings, then this is where we're going. We're gonna keep going with this. We're gonna get more witches. It's gonna be witch, 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 witch. It's gonna be 
Uh, it's going to be pulling the, the thread instead of the force. This is where we are. I see someone in chat saying this is Willow 2.0. This is worse than Willow. Not like Willow. Worse than Willow. Way worse. Pro, do you remember television show. a year show. ago, the, maybe a year and maybe. a half ago, there were rumors that this was where this was going to go back then, that they wanted to focus more on the witches and what was going on in the ex extra galactic space in Ahsoka and where a skeleton crew was going to go, mm. and that they were going to try and make this more about witches in the background. Do you remember that? I do, absolutely. So, I mean, this has been floating around even before we started hearing these rumors about the Acolyte. It, it's, it turns out that those from a year to a year and a half ago sounds like we're spot on. Absolutely, 100%. And, and, and I just want to give a concise answer to your answer, Pro. Yes, they are trying to change it, and it would if, if yes, it, it does technically change it. I say no because I don't think real Star Wars fans even accept this crap. It, it's just like when they write these books that no one's going to read and no one really cares about. Well, you know, when, when Michelle says that uh, this is crap, you know that you know that it's really <laughs> hit the fan. Marvin, Marvin, walk us through how if this if this is canon and it is, if this is Lucasfilm's official storyline for Star Wars, walk us through how this changes the original movies. It, it fundamentally changes them because you everything we have been told, everything George told us about what this is, about what the force is, what the chosen one is. It's all gone now. It's all out the window. This felt like it was done with malice. It felt like it was done to take this from George Lucas, to make this. Uh, it, it's written by a blockheaded narcissist who can do nothing but shape things into her. And what she is, is a twisted, ugly individual and she had to make the Star Wars universe twisted and ugly. Anakin Skywalker, there's now no longer anything special. This is what they, this is what they, Chris Chibnall did to Doctor Who. It's exactly what he did to Doctor Who with the Timeless Child. It fundamentally changes everything that we know about the law in order to transfigure this into something new that nobody wants or even acknowledges anymore. It, it was, I, I, I can't even, it, it is. I'm trying to think how to, but I, I do agree with what Lauren said. I think that the witches and the magic and all that stuff, that is, that's the future of Star Wars because you can easily make that the force is female. That can be always all women. And you, you, you know, you never have to deal with men using the force again. The fact that now the Jedi are colonizers and the Jedi are appropriators. I mean, it's all just so blunt. It's, it's, it's a sledgehammer. She's beating the messaging into our heads. It's, it's just, it's dead. If last week killed Star Wars, this week just took the ashes and blew it all out into space it's done it's gone john scale of zero to ten where do you put the acolyte episode three one because they made something they made something jonas uh i rated the last one a five for just getting every for actually producing a show casting generally well you know things like that I'm, I'm going to give this one. Well, yeah, I gave the last one a five because the production design wasn't bad. The special effects weren't bad. All of the things except I just, for... I think it was just for Jay, for um, and, and yeah, Lee Jung though. Yeah, Lee Jung Jay actually delivered his lines yeah. well. So I gave that one a five. I'm giving this one a like a 2.5. Marvin? Oh, gosh. Ugh, I'm tempted to go with a one because, again, they made something. But you know what? With what they've done to Star Wars and, and the implications that it has on movies that I love, it gets a zero from me. Dud. So I'm going to give it a 0 0.5. I'm giving it a 0 0.5 because it is something, and it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. There are things that I have literally turned it off because it was painful to watch. This well, also was painful. Off, though. Yeah, I if, I, if I wasn't I reviewing this, I would have turned it off. I would have turned it off halfway through. W once the witches started doing their writhing thing, I just said, screw this. This is yeah. not Star Wars. So 0 0.5 it's is like my score right. for it. I, I'm willing to give a zero. I, I don't think we've ever given a zero on this channel. There's stuff that deserves zeros. We can go find it. It's on it's on obscure cable channels that you have to uh, scour through at 3 a.m. But, you know, there are zeros out there. This is 0 0.5. That's not to say the entire series is going to be that low, but... We get, I, want, I, I gave it a three for the last week, so 0 0.5 today. So I'm averaging, what, 1.75, somewhere around there. Anyway, according to what we've said here, <clears throat> sounds like we're at about a 1.5 for the uh, group. Is that fair? 
about. I can't believe I'm the one dragging this up to a 1.5, yeah. but okay. <laughs> we blame you, Jonas. We all blame you for this. So 1.5 out of 10 is the review score for the you, you, you gotta, You got to give him a little room to go down here. That's uh, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> that was a highlight from a special presentation of The Pro Show, where the full recording can be found on the WW Pro YouTube channel, exclusive to members. So what did you think about this trash fire of an episode? Did Kathleen Kennedy and Leslie Headland finally destroy Star Wars once and for all? Or was it already dead? Please let us know in the comments below. Like this video if you did like this video. Share us out as it helps us out tremendously against the YouTube algorithm. And thank you so much for watching. T3, yo. Please comment, like, and share this video. And don't forget to subscribe to That Park Place Podcasts Online. Your source for exclusive content and highlights from WDW Pro, The Pro Show, and That Park Place. For all the news that should be fun.